Hola, mi gente linda, and welcome to Fanavision, the Todo Soul Flow podcast that brings you all local stories, news, and music with your definitely back for the last time this season host, Aneri Clary, the co-founders of Fanamia Club. Yes, Fanamia Club is a collective that's making supporting local creatives and entrepreneurs as easy as signing up to our new newsletter. We'll tell you more about that later on. Super exciting. Every episode, we bring on a locally based fan to discuss what they're doing in their community, and we also highlight a, n a creative and feature their new release. But today, we have a really special episode for you guys because it's kind of like a legacy episode. Both of the panas that we're bringing on have been panas since the very beginning. Um, we have Smash Miami. Um, they signed up. They were number 34. And we also have Cien Fuegos, which was actually number four in our directory. Yep. Wow, that's incredible. I can't wait to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but before we jump into all of that, just gotta do like a little mental health check in. Yeah. How are you doing, Clady? Doing so good. How are we Annette? feeling today? We're feeling so great. <laughs> we, were <laughs> we were out um, on the beach, you know, as one is on a full moon, just dancing, and yeah, got home at like four, but we're here. We're here now. <laughs> yeah. And it was it was great. Yeah. It was great. We had released bagels so much bagels, bagels. We yeah. Had bagels. Yes. And then we went to like a local kava shop that we had discovered for the first time. So, oh my God, yes. It's it, was it was weekend. so cute. Yeah. We hope you guys are also having a good weekend. And, uh, and yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's jump in. We're doing something a little bit different with the new panas this time because. So we got a lot of you guys. We got a lot of you guys. Yeah. So, the thing is <laughs> that you might have noticed or you may not have noticed that we were not here the last time. So like two weeks ago, we did not have a podcast. So like in that absence, now we have like 40, 40 new members. Panas. <laughs> and at one point we did list off like 50 panas in one in one episode, but, but we're, we're not, not doing, doing that, that to no. you again. That's no. No. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start off with the creatives. So creatives, we actually have our very dear friend, SDRV. Yes. So that's Steph, uh, and they do Freelance videography, video editing, post-production sound, sound mixing, engineering, PR, and marketing. In addition to also being our stand-in sound person here at MCR for Panavision. Yes, so thank shout you out to so Steph. much. Love, love them. Love them. <laughs> love them. And then we have Viper. So really excited to onboard Viper because they are actually going to be performing at an uh, event that we have coming up. So they're a singer, songwriter, and performer from Miami. They make, an alt, they make alt pop and indie rock music. Then we have Sasha Camille. Uh, yes, you might have her. seen them recently at Igor y Sus Panas, the last event that we had on September 24th. Uh, so uh, she is a local musician, writer, visionary, and entrepreneur. And then lastly, we have Rebecca Wood, um, or AKA Swamped in the Glades. So she is actually an environmental educator who has created an, an educational board game about the Everglades called Swamped in the Everglades. So this is really cool. In this like sort of like edition of um, you, New Panas, you're gonna notice a lot of Panas uh, that are in the sustainability realm, and there's a very interesting reason for that. More on that later. But I'm really excited to have locally based board games. Like, we should yeah. definitely host a local board, board game, game night. night. Yeah. yeah. We uh, have like two that we know of. So, if you know of any more local board games, we want them. Hit us up, let us know what's good. Yeah. All right, on to organizations. So one of our favorites, Raw Figs, I'm sure you've known them. They provide uh, figure drawing pop-ups all over South Florida. Um, if you haven't caught one of their classes, definitely check it out. We also have- Shout out to Vida. Yes, love her. <laughs> And hopefully we'll have her on the podcast. Yes. Yes. In, yes. in the next season. Uh, we also have Transit Alliance Miami. So they advocate for walkable streets, bikeable neighborhoods, and better public transportation for all of Miami Dade. So I'm sure. Wow. It's Thank you for in your that. service. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to walk everywhere. <laughs> um, next, we have Sunrise Movement Miami. They're SoFlo's local youth led climate advocacy group. Um, and then we also have Comb Cutters, which is a cooperative of beekeepers <laughs> whose mission is to create long-term shifts towards sustainable communities through walking tours, education, and they do bee removal. They talk about pollinators, all bee stuff. So very much up my alley. Want to check them out soon. Yeah, just, just look at that smile. Yeah. <laughs> 
say the B. All right. So next up, we got small businesses. So we have uh, three small businesses for you. First is Soil Mate Composting, a Miami-based composting service. Then we have Lucky 12, the first vintage store located in the heart of Homestead, Florida. And then we have Compost for Life, LLC, a compost community initiative with a doorstop service anywhere in Miami-Dade and Broward counties. So that's, you heard that. Two composting organizations, small businesses that are <laughs> part of our directory. We yes. have variety now we have in <laughs> composting circles. <laughs> next up, farms. So if you know of a farm, get them on the directory. We want them. Um, next up, we have MAPA members. So those are businesses that have a physical location. You can go show up to their door. Um, really excited about this one. There is a new spot in Doral opening up called 3002 House. It is a brand new house. It's actually a warehouse um, in Trout's design district. Um, and it has, it's very multi-use. So they have, you know, a space for events, um, for workshops. They're looking to expand and be the hub for everything creative in Doral. Yes, shout out to the beautiful women who run that space that we are very excited to be collaborating with in the near future. Yes, those are the Vanessas. So definitely. Shout out to the Vanessas. <laughs> and then uh -huh. second, we have this this incredible collaborative um, new banner called Climate and Innovation Hub for Future Cities. So also a sustainable uh, new banner. They're actually based right across the street from the Little Haiti Cultural Center. Uh huh. Uh huh. And th it's a beautiful facility as well. They have their um, they house a sustainable um, or conscious what is it real estate group? Yeah. Yep. Right next to the Metro One. Uh, commercial brokerage mm -hmm. so it's basically like a bunch of startups kind of like in the same space um, and it's all about sus building sustainability in South Florida yep. so we're very excited to be working with that event space <coughs> also an upcoming collab that uh, actually we've announced you might have seen it on our reels but more on that in the near future yes and that puts us at 410 members, Whoa. which is a lot, a <laughs> lot. We actually, so we, it's not, it's 410. Four um, we actually have a goal of getting 500 fanas by Halloween. So if you want to help us get to that goal, please like send, like DM your friend uh, our, our information. And listen, it's fun free fact, to join. Fun fact, yeah. uh, 500 fanas was actually our end of year goal. Oh yeah. So that timeline has moved up because of the amount of fanas that we're getting on the daily. So thank you guys so much. And I, I can't wait to build even more momentum yes. with our directory. That's just so fun. Um, so yeah, thank you to everyone who's joined so far. We appreciate every single person that has signed up. Um, we get really excited when we get those emails. Um, and yeah, if you want to sign up, again, it's free to join. All you got to do is fill out a form. And we've made those forms easier. So definitely check out the new and improved yes. form. Yes. It's like so fun. It's like a joy to fill out. Yeah. You literally, it will make your mm -hmm. day just how, how much fun this is. And then you get featured on our story. Yeah. I make a really cute story post for you once you sign up. Yeah. Like and then you might be featured on, on more reels like from that. And then we support. Just, just join. Just join. Anyways. Okay, so it's important to stay educated about what's going on with our panas and local community. As you know, so luckily, Claudia and I are here to catch you up on lo que está pasando in South Florida in our segment, Meanwhile, Meanwhile in SoFlo. So really, really good. Yeah, I bet y'all missed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the harmony. All right, so <laughs> first up, we got Artisan's Playhouse. They are looking for volunteers over in Hialeah. Some perks include um, access to free tufting and pottery workshops and also pop-up events. And they also rolled out this new membership program where you can have uh, studio time yeah. at any time. Yeah, and that's really exciting. They've been, they've been thinking about doing this for a while, and now it's actually accessible. So kudos to Artisan's Playhouse. Yeah. Uh, they've been a really great incredible. supporter of us. Yeah. Um, so and their spot is incredible. I, last time I was there, every time you're there, you notice something new in that space. Um, so yeah, it's fun. Next up, uh, Dylan Hall just released his new song, Boom Shakalaka. You can stream it on all available platforms. Just give it a listen. Yeah. I assume. I did not check that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Another really, really cool update for the community. Do you want to build your community organizing and leadership skills? If so, 
join Engage Miami for a statewide youth organizing training that's happening in Santa Florida in Apopka, um, hosted by their partner, Hope uh, Community Center. The dates are October 13th through the 15th, and all of the expenses are covered. So if you are someone who, you know, loves community and you're interested in maybe, like, getting filling in a role of community organizer or just like supporting community members definitely check it out or if you just want to hang with us for the weekend oh because yeah. laddie and i are going, going to be there so it's like a whole weekend of just like talking and trying to figure out how we can make south florida a better place to live in so if that's something that interests you hit us up we have the deets and uh, yeah come you gotta with do us it quick. you gotta do it quick okay yeah. it's october 13th through 15th and we need to make sure that we're like there live <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> slide. All right, and then this last one is really exciting. Um, Philip from House Show is hosting their first chef and set event. So this is waves of food and music coincide for the first time in the space. Their mission is to create a vibrant community that cherishes the fusion of food and music as a powerful tool to express culture and innovation. So this is actually the first of a series. I'm told there's gonna be a series of these events. And I mean, the house shows have always been so fun. They've been, yeah. you know, yeah. such an excellent yeah. event. So I can't wait to see how this My goes. favorite was Panalandia. I'm a little <laughs> bit biased. I'm You're a little bit biased. Extremely <laughs> biased. <laughs> Well, it was it's a good okay. One. It's it was yeah, a good it was one. great. It was if great. you know, you know. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. For those of you who, yeah, follow. Yeah. So in Panamia Club News, we're gonna run through these. But October seventh, we have a really cool event that we are sponsoring in collaboration with folks of San Pedro. So you know, San Pedro fans, a serotonin dipity. All right, all right. Come through our first event sponsorship. We're going to set up a Panavision station. Uh, where we are going to interview all the bands and musicians after their sets. So if you are going to just miss us so much, you know, after the end of our season, don't worry because we'll be back. Catch us there on Saturday. We'll yeah. see you. Yeah. So interviewing all your faves. Shiva, Mad Woman, eh, Viper. Viper. That we and just Folktale. Yeah. And Folktale. And it's then always a good more. time. There's more. There's more. <laughs> All right, yes, and then we also briefly talked about this recently just now, um, but we are hosting a sustainability market um, in December at the Hub, at the Hub in Miami, and this market is going to be a little bit special, so it's going to be more so about sustainability as a lifestyle. We're not just going to have sustainable vendors and sustainable consumption. We're also going to be talking about how to shift things within your own lifestyle so that you can be more sustainable, you can, you know, so that your actions can better align with your values, pretty much. Yeah, and we have a ton of stuff planned for this. Yes. Um, it's really ambitious, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah really it's, it's kind of like our biggest event yet. I'm actually not going to give you too many details because, you know, it's a surprise. But, uh, but you but should want to be just involved. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to be involved, hit us up. Yeah, we're looking for vendors, looking for potential workshop, looking for potentially visual artists to submit to something. Yes. So for sure, for definitely sure. Definitely room to be a part of this. Yes. And then in October, so this is actually really, really exciting, okay? So in October, we will be releasing our first monthly newsletter thanks to our amazing copywriters, B and James. Thank you, guys. Thank mm. you. We have lots of really cool things planned for this newsletter, including special interviews, playlists, even collaborations with other cool South Floridian organizations. Some, hint, hint, <laughs> <laughs> maybe have even been on our podcast recently. Okay, so that's a hint for you guys. Um, how do you want to access, how do you get to access this incredible newsletter? Sign up on www.panamia.club. And if you want access to exclusive content from us, you can even uh, sign up to be our Gente de Pana. So uh, become a membership subscriber, which we will tell you more about that in a second. Right? Or no, I think that's right now. Uh, we'll give you more details. So with your membership of Gente de Pana, you get, again, access to this incredible newsletter that's, you know, I would say it's the email that you are excited about. So if if there's no email that you're excited to about to receive, yeah, you're it could work. be us. That could be us. You're at work and you're like, man, I gotta check my emails, yeah. and then you see like an email that says like, oh, 
hola, mi gente linda, and you're like, oh my god, this is going to be so fun. Yeah, yeah, just like imagine that, you know. Yeah, that could be. I know be that you want that for yourself, <laughs> so. <laughs> sign up. Just, uh -huh. just sign up. Yeah. Um, you also get other things like discounts to our events and cool merch that we're going to be rolling out. Shout out to um, Brian. Brian, who's helping us do that. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, more on that and merch and ways to support to come. All right. So that's it for Meanwhile in SoFlo. If you know of anything, any interesting news you want us to bring up for the third season, yeah, sure, DM us. Um, yeah, and also, like, if you have an event coming up, you can always tag us in your content, and we can go ahead and share with our with our community. We'll go ahead and post it on our story um, so that more people find out about what's, what's happening. Yeah. What's happening, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we're all caught up with community things, with Panamia Club things. Now we can finally bring in our lovely guest, Adrian of Smash Miami. Adrian, yeah. Adrian. In the meantime, in while meantime, he comes on, yeah. Do you want to introduce our, our amazing guest today? Oh, yes, absolutely. So, Adrian is one of the organizers with Smash Miami. So, like I said, Smash Miami was one of the first FANAs to join our directory, number 34. They are a nonprofit that organizes tenants to build community controlled affordable housing and make housing a human right in Miami. We can all agree that housing is a human right. So, that's what they're trying to do. And then they began 2015 um, addressing against slumlords and the way that they're taking advantage of our community. So thank you so much for being here, Adrian. It's a pleasure. This on and picking up? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, great. Awesome. Hey, Falepanas. Hey. How are you? Hey, Falepanas. Good. Yeah, good. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Yes. This yes. is a huge opportunity. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're so happy to have you. We've been thinking about having Smash pretty much since we, we started the podcast. Yeah. yeah, we were like, you were one of the first people that we thought of. <laughs> Well, uh, that's that's a tremendous honor. So, I mean, and I've been watching everything that Panamia has been doing, and I have to say I can't appreciate it enough mm -hmm. because there are d uh, there just aren't enough platforms to really highlight local businesses, businesses that are run by young people, by young Latinx folks um, in Miami, and ones that really have good sets of values, too. And I can see that you put a lot of, first of all, a lot of passion in the work that you're doing, a lot of love in the work that you're doing. And um, you, you go out there to try to find different people and leaders in the community that are, are doing the things that need to be done. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate that. And, and I remember like what our, our first conversation, mm -hmm. which was actually um, in house show, like yes. last year. I know. I can't believe it's been so yeah, long. Yeah, last year. This is why we say like you're one of our oldest fanas. Uh, what was the date exactly? It was October. October 29th. October 29th, you signed up. We started uh, August 1st. And I remember the conversation that we had about it. We were explaining our concept, and you were one of the people that I feel like was most enthusiastic about this idea when, like, kind of in its conception. And you were like, oh, so it's like a, what was it? It was like a an, an anarch anarcho like chamber of commerce. Yes, I like remember. That. I said something like yeah, that. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, like yes. an anarchist yes. chamber of commerce. That's the yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, you were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, I'm hey, gonna copy yeah. left that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, maybe not our tagline, but <laughs> yeah, like low key. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's our internal tagline. <laughs> And, and here you all are, I mean, and you're doing more than most actual chambers of commerce actually do, you know, by doing a podcast and by having incredibly well thought out um, posts on your social media and, you know, and all the pop-ups that you do at different events. So, like, y'all are killing it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank of you. course. From, from, you know, one nonprofit organizer <laughs> to another. I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate <laughs> you. Means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but speaking of nonprofits, uh, tell us in your words, like, how... Smash came to be. All right. Well, um, nothing wrong with nonprofits. Uh, we also recognize that there's something called the nonprofit industrial complex, okay. which basically okay. means that uh, there's this whole system out there that pits nonprofits against each other for funding and things like that, and also that encourages more competition than actual collaboration and mission creep. And that's something that we don't necessarily want to promote. Um, so we are a nonprofit, but we're like, you know, just like y'all, 
we're more than just that, right? It's right. not about not getting it. Not ha getting a profit is important, mm -hmm. but it's really more about like the mission and making sure that we truly do tackle the roots of oppression in our society, right. and the roots being racism, patriarchy, capitalism, imperialism, colonialism, all of those things. So, but that is one of the things that we do. And I will say that Smash, for those who are unaware, is a community land trust that is building power for housing and climate justice in Miami. Okay. We operate two housing cooperatives, which function as bases of operation and housing for our housing organizing leaders. And we have one in Liberty City and another one in Dade Land. And then we are opening another one up that we are designing on a vacant lot that we own, also in Liberty City. So that's what we do, and that's how we do it. Incredible. Yeah. And and like what sort of what inspired this mission? Like from for you personally and then kind of like how did you find other interested people? Well, as I'm sure you have noticed and everybody else in this room and everybody else watching this right now, Miami is un carajo de caro, <laughs> okay? Pero <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like we are all well. spending un platal <laughs> for rent. <laughs> Every single month, um, the <laughs> the affordable housing crisis is real, yeah. and it is especially real in Miami. Miami frequently ranks number one uh, for the most unaffordable place, both because of the cost of the housing and also because of the low incomes on average. So that's a problem. But it became very personal to me in a number of different ways. Um, so uh, throughout my life, I'm, I wasn't born in Miami. I was born in New Orleans, but I was raised in Miami. And uh, we lived in Kendall when I was really young. Hurricane Andrew happened and destroyed our house. So that's always been something that has left a very big impact on me. Mm -hmm. Being without a home, having to live with a family that you know was also Venezuelan, but they gave us a place to live because they understood what was going on. That family, coincidentally, um, was the Borias. Uh, Luigi Boria eventually became mayor of Doral. Wow. Yeah, so going all the way back to then, right? Yeah, but he happened to live in Doral at that time where we were living. And um, that was really impactful. Another thing that happened to me was in high school, uh, a friend of mine, she dropped out and went to go live with her boyfriend. And I was like, okay, that's cool. If that's what you want to do with your life, perfect. I went to go visit her one day, and I was really shocked at the conditions that they had to live in. It was a studio apartment, and it was not only her and her boyfriend. It was also their three kids and their, like, five dogs. And the three kids and the five dogs all slept on, like, this, this weird kind of, like, m puddle of blankets on the floor. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the kids were kind of, like, having a good time of it because they were like, oh, I get to sleep with the dogs and blah, blah, blah. But it was just – that was also the necessity yeah. of the economics of the situation, yeah. right? And and I asked her – mind you, I was, like, 14 or 15 at this time. I asked her, hey, why do you live like this? Why don't you just get a bigger place? I mean, there's five of you, right? And And then the five dogs on top of that. And she was like, well, when you actually start paying rent, you're going to realize that it's very expensive to live here. Mm -hmm. And that's why people have to live like this. And we're not the only ones. There are many people who have to live this way in these kinds of conditions. Then the third experience that really marked my life was when I became a community organizer for real. I worked for an organization called the Miami Worker Center. And my first task was knocking on every single door in Liberty City, which I did. Uh -huh. And wow, let me tell you. Yeah. You don't know how bad it is in your own backyard until you see it for yourself. Mm. And people would welcome me into their homes and you know, I would ask them, hey, what are some of the biggest housing challenges you're facing? And they'd be like, take a look. Just literally look around. Black mold all over the ceilings and the walls and the floors, plumbing that was out of control, raw sewage that was coming out of like the bathtub and oh creating like layers God. of sludge. People couldn't even bathe rats and roaches from like a biblical plague i'm telling you it was bad it was awful wow. and um the first time i saw it it really changed my life then the first time i smelled it when you smell that in person there were things that i smelled that i couldn't tolerate for more than 30 seconds and this is how people have to live on a day-to-day -day basis wow. and again the question came to me i was like why do people have to live like this and it was especially black people, black queer people that were having to live this way. Yeah. And a couple of things were going off. I was like, first of all, nobody should have to live like this. But then why do we as a society, as a Miami society, tend to think that this is okay, right? Like this is just normal. This mm -hmm. is the w they essentially deserve to live like this, yeah. right? 
and uh, a lot of the responses to that have to do with racism, mm -hmm. just p plain and simple. Uh, there is a lot of anti-blackness in Miami and uh, kind of the dismissal of the kind of oppression and the struggles that black people have to face every single day, this being one of the biggest. Right. And it, it really incensed me. It like morally outraged me that we as a society were just basically forgetting about a whole chunk of our people. Yeah. And there you have the answer. We don't think of them, or not the majority of Miamians don't think of Liberty City, Overtown, Little Haiti, and the folks who are living in these conditions as like part of our people, the people of Miami. Yeah. And that really has to change. Yeah. So that, um, that made me wanna question things and wanna figure out, okay, how do we figure this out? Um, how do we make it so that people can actually have a decent place to live, but not make it expensive and gentrify the entire neighborhood? So then I talked to one of the leaders of the Miami Worker Center, who is now my co-executive director at Smash. Her name is Trinice Bryant, and I love her so much. She's my everything my ride or die, and uh, sh you know, I asked her, what do we do about this? And she was like, I got you, baby. <laughs> We're gonna do a community land trust. I was like, what is that? And she said, a community land trust is where the neighborhood owns the land and gets to decide how the land is used. And then if somebody wants to buy a house on that land, they can do that, but they have to do it according to the rules of the land because mm -hmm. there's a separation between the house and the land underneath, mm -hmm. and there's a ground lease that connects the two. The ground lease lasts 99 years, and you can renew it as many times as you want. But if you ever sell your house, you do have to sell it according to the rules. So the rules could be things like um, you can't sell it past a certain amount. You have to sell it to another family from the same neighborhood that is also going through housing unaffordability. Um, you have to, if we gave you subsidy to be able to buy the house initially, you have to give that subsidy back. And this is a way to create permanence, mm -hmm. prevent gentrification, prevent slumlords, prevent rising rents and uh, make it so that this is a now a sustainable neighborhood that is right. equitably developed. Right, okay. And that's what we do. That's what our organization does. We create housing that is on a land trust. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And you know, what a, what a crazy journey. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm glad that you're here and you're doing what you do and um, it's it's definitely very inspiring just like seeing you guys and and the movement that you guys are creating and and all of the all of the things that all of the activations in in you know like public um, I was trying to come up with a word it's like the the hearings that's yes. what it is mm -hmm. like all the public hearings the you guys are are present so I see you doing the work and it's 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 like just just like I'm glad that that's happening here yeah. like that you have that movement I, I really appreciate that yes um, more than just building houses we organize for housing justice as you just highlighted so that means we do go to hearings we do advocate for laws we just had a law passed in Miami-Dade County recently actually that is going to place 50 of their publicly owned vacant lots into a community land trust so there's a possibility crossing our fingers that we could get some of those lots and we could build even more housing but that is the result of many, many years of us organizing and pushing them to go in this particular direction of community control. Um, okay, I have a question for you. Sure. So, and it's, it's gonna be a bit of a two-part question. So the first question is, what, um, what are the biggest factors that you think are contributing to the Miami housing pr crisis right now? Mm -hmm. And then the other is actually, <coughs> I want to ask you because personally, um, like what can people that are working in the real estate industry do mm -hmm. to like practice in an ethical way that won't contribute to this problem? Because I'm a realtor myself mm -hmm. and I haven't really practiced as a realtor. I'm in the middle of actually like recertifying, but like it's been one of the, the things that has caused me hesitance to work in that field because I'm like, I don't, I, I'm, everything that I'm about is contributing like a positive effect into the community. And I don't want to do something that is the antithesis of that. Yep. Well, uh, those are excellent questions. Those are arguably the questions. And uh, I'll be try to be as brief as possible about the first question. So what's contributing to the housing crisis? Unfortunately, Miami is kind of addicted to this thing. It's called <laughs> real estate bubbles, uh -huh. okay? And every 10 years or so, we have a bubble and that means that uh, a whole bunch of housing becomes outrageously expensive, kind of like what's happening right now. 
and then nobody's able to afford anything anymore. So then there's a crash after that, you know? And we just go through these booms and busts all the time. That has actually been happening in that cycle since the 20s, since the 1920s, sorry. Yeah. So this is kind of like in our DNA. <laughs> um, <laughs> Subsisting on very unsustainable economic practices, right? There's only so much land that we can actually sell to people. There's only so much money they're willing to pay for it. And yet somehow people think every year, I'm going to find more land and I'm going to sell it for more money. Mm. That's not going to happen, right? The other thing is there's a lot of foreign investment. Whenever there's an economic crisis in another right. country, those assets and that capital tends to park in Miami because it's very stable. Right. Um, so every time there was an economic crisis in Argentina or in Venezuela or in Brazil, those folks were like, aha, everything's going to shit over here. I'm going to park my money in Miami, mm -hmm. in Miami real estate specifically. So that's been a big contributor. Um, then you have this phenomenon called climate gentrification, which is not just regular old gentrification <laughs> of low-income <laughs> no, areas. Todavía más jodido. para. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, you have high elevation areas in Miami. High elevation areas are like between 15 and 20 feet above sea level. And that's much higher than the average, which is like four to six feet above sea level. And do you know what's going to happen to all of Florida in the year 2100 by any chance? I try not to think about <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I bought a canoe in preparation. Uh, you bought a canoe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a very smart investment, I have to say. The canoe buyers of today will be the champions of tomorrow, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Um, so you are right, yes, we are going to be under six feet of water, okay? So everything that is about four to six feet above sea level, you're going to be underwater, sorry. But everything above that is actually going to make it out okay, and the neighborhoods that are typically in that range with their elevation are low-income, mostly black neighborhoods like Liberty City, Overtown, Little Haiti, Little Haiti especially, some of the highest elevation is in Little Haiti. So that's where you see now a lot of development as well because mm -hmm. the land is still relatively cheap compared to the rest of Miami and the elevation is very good. You're seeing insurance rates rise on the coastal areas and the flood prone areas. If you are in a flood zone, if you're in a flood map zone, you are paying a lot more for insurance than you are if you're not in a flood zone. And so developers are not stupid, you know. Right. There might be a whole bunch of people in America who think that climate change is a hoax, but if you're a developer in Miami, you know for a fact it is not. So they are buying in all of these different areas. And all of that has contributed to excessive amounts of speculation, excessive amounts of price gouging and hikes and all of these different things. That's, that's really where the, pr the crisis is coming from. Now, um, to your other question, what can real estate agents do? Well, <coughs> being completely honest with you, we don't tend to work with real estate agents um, in terms of like as a block of people. We have real estate agents that are on our board who help us find real estate that we can then turn into a community land trust. And that's really one of the best ways to help out. Uh, the reality is it's so difficult to find any kind of land that's even somewhat affordable anywhere in Miami-Dade County. So we have lots of people constantly just doing those searches for us and hopefully finding other properties that we can develop. But uh, if there's real estate collectives out there that can focus on building affordable housing, you know, I think that every real estate agent now, especially if you're really good at what you do, you can't just do the real estate side of things. You have to do a little bit of the development side of things, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing a lot of these people that dabble in both. They're both doing actual development of housing and they're doing, you know, real estate itself. And I think that if you are that kind of um, enterprising real estate agent, I guess you could say then it would behoove you to think about, okay, how can we do this? Instead of making money for myself, how do we make money for the entire community? Right. And a community land trust is a great way of doing that because everybody benefits from that wealth building, not just one person or one company. So these are things that we hope that over uh, the next couple of years we can really change in people's minds, specifically the value that profits come before people. We want to change that want to change that to now the value that housing is a human right, that actually people come before profits. And so by having conversations like this, by appearing on the Panamia podcast, you know, that's how we're going to be able to do that. And we have a number of other tools at our disposal as well. We've actually developed a game. I heard you talking about somebody else who developed oh, a co-op oh. game or something like that earlier. Yeah. What yeah? about the Everglades? About the Everglades. Yeah. That's right. Um, so we've developed a game. It's called House of Justice. 
And this is a game that gets people to change their values from people or profits before people to now housing as a human right by playing the game. Yeah. If you I ever. I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> a great idea. That's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> like you're just like, oh, hey, guys, <laughs> do you want to play a game? Let's do game night. And <laughs> it's like actually. And then you actually play this. Yes. Yeah. Housing advocacy. Like. <laughs> And it's really fun because it's actually like a twister style board game. It's not like a, like a tabletop game. So okay. it's this huge mat that goes on the floor oh and people God. walk around it. And, you know, you can really live into the game, so to speak. And um, we've gotten so many beautiful conversations, transformational, powerful stories out of using that game over the last couple of years. And it hasn't even, like, been finalized. We're still in, like, the beta version of it. So um, if folks want to know more about that, they can come to our monthly meetings where we sometimes play the game. Our next monthly meeting is actually going to be a Halloween party on October 11th. So folks should totally, totally come Ooh, to that one. That's my yes. birthday. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, wow. Come and we'll have a cake for you. It'll uh, be your birthday cake. Okay. Yeah. okay? yeah. <laughs> so there's like all these cool little things that we're doing to make it so that, uh, you know, organizing for housing justice isn't like work. It's not this drudgery. It's actually a lot of fun. It's actually a way that you can spend your time that brings a lot of meaning to your life, but also benefits the community. Incredible. Mm hmm that's so wonderful because if there's one thing about Miami is that you have to make it fun for people to oh really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> preferably with liquor, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta make it fun. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, background music. Um, I was gonna ask because I know that I I used to work as a, a home inspector in Miami Gardens, so actually a lot of what you're saying, like I was I was seeing it in real time, um, but I. I know that, I mean, I had my own run-ins with, like, landlords that, you know, wanted to, didn't want to fix anything, you know, wanted to lie to insurances and whatnot. But I'm wondering from how much is it a s an issue of, like, landlords versus just the institutions itself and government just not being really aligned for the people? I think more than the landlords, and, you know, I don't get along with landlords all that much, but um, it's really not a landlord problem, if I'm being very honest. It's a housing system problem. We have a housing system in Miami and also in the country that is all about profits mm -hmm. and profit making and the commodification of people's homes and using the house as a piggy bank so mm -hmm. that you can invest in it, get lots of equity, and then potentially flip it maybe five or ten years from now, make double what you spent on it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the mentality that everybody has around houses. Mm -hmm. It's not for a home. It's not for a shelter. It's a capital investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as long as we continue to have that system, at least for the housing that people need, then none of these things are really going to fundamentally change. Like we can continue to build community land trust housing. That housing will be decommodified. It's not gonna be part of this system, but we can only build so much. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much land available that we can do that with. There really has to be widespread systems change. <coughs> and in order for there to be widespread systems change, there has to be widespread values change. Mm -hmm. The average person in Miami unfortunately believes that real estate and being a landlord and all that comes with it, that's like a quick way to make some money. And I get it, people really need it because it's very difficult living in Miami. It, like it's constantly trying to kill you with high rents and high temperatures yeah. and flooding. And you know, it's basically just telling you all day, every day, move, go, find some other place to live, right? Yeah. So I get it, people need extra income, but there is a very exploitative aspect to being an absentee landlord, having all of these units that you don't actually manage, and then just kind of collecting the cash flow from those properties. Um, there is a definitely a more responsible way of doing that, and I hope that everybody listening to this, if you're a real estate agent, you're a responsible real estate agent and a landlord. Um, but widespread, we really have to talk about policy change. Mm -hmm. We really have okay. to talk about how do we now figure out a housing system itself so that people have the housing that they need because they deserve it, mm -hmm. because you're a human being, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Not because you, you, you it, right now we have a system where you only deserve housing if you can afford it. Sounds like a vicious cycle. Yeah, that's Kinda exactly. Kind of like a toxic relationship, I don't know. <laughs> better oh like very toxic. No, better yeah. like very yeah. Yeah. toxic. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, well, thank you so much talking to us for talking to us, Adrian. Really appreciate you and everything that you do with Smash. Uh, we're going to invite you back a little bit later, but before you leave, is there anything else you wanted to, to say? Yes. On the podcast? One quick yes. thing. 
Uh, if folks are interested in this topic and you want to take action right now, you can go to houseofjustice.us, that's houseofjustice.us, and fill out something called the Miami Housing Justice Agenda. When you do that, it's not only a petition that you're signing, it's also going to automatically send an email to all of your elected officials, from President Biden all the way down to Commissioner, Commissioner for this area I think is Christine King, and it's going to let them know that you are in favor of making housing a human right. And there's a whole bunch of values and policies that they need to adopt in order to do that. And I promise you, if we can get this particular agenda passed by the county, we can make it so that basically 95% of Miamians have a home that they can afford sustainably. And we can achieve that within the next 10 years. I love that because you make it easy for That's us, too. So yes. You're sending the emails. Yes. All you got to do is click twice and oh it sends God. the emails automatically based on your address. Yes. Okay. Wow. I'll uh -huh. do that as right easy after as becoming a fauna crazy easier, <laughs> easier almost. <laughs> all right awesome well there you go you just pulled it up there, yep there wow. it is yep and then you just hit These sign are our teleprompter everybody yeah <laughs> already doing the work who's already doing it yes <laughs> and Wonderful. by doing that you're already doing like easily 500 percent more than the average miamian does <laughs> in favor of this of this cause of housing justice okay. yeah all right well awesome once well. again thank you adrian thank you Really appreciate y'all. Um, it's been a pleasure. Okay. And um, I, I just, again, I have to reiterate just how much I admire everything that you're doing. Okay. And please continue to do it. These, this is an Im a very important platform. Don't let ever anybody take it away from you. We will fight for you. Okay. No matter what it is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Y'all right? you. have a good one. Thank you. Never had anybody say that to I me. know. <laughs> All right. Okay. So next up, we have um, also very longtime friends of ours. Actually, the fourth Bana ever to sign up for Panamia Club, and that is Cien Fuegos Co-op. Yes. Yay. I'm super excited. I'll just talk a little bit about Cien Fuegos Co-op. Um, yes. Take Doing so much. No, you're right here. You're right here. Right here. Don't be shy. Hi. <laughs> With whom do we have Hello. the pleasure of speaking with today? Hey, so my name is David. Awesome. Hi, David. Hi, David. <laughs> of course. Long time no see. Long time no see. Um, so I'm one of the founders of Cienfuegos Co-op. Uh, we're a radical bookstore, cafe, and event space in the making. Okay. Right. Love so that. we're uh, fundraising right now to get a physical space, and uh, we're in the works with a local nonprofit called uh, Catalyst Miami. Mm. Um which they do great work, check them out. And um, we're part of their uh, worker co-op, uh, well, worker-owned enterprise program. So their goal is to start up as many co-ops in Miami as possible. So we're really proud to be a part of that um, network and to be engaged in the work. Awesome, amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, I, I really, you know, have seen you guys so so like often like being out in the community and and just like advocating for for like your bookstore and and having this like third space right like working on building this third space i i remember when we met it w i was doing a market for aloe baby and i had just started talking about panamia club and we were doing this market in the underline mm -hmm. and you guys were giving out stickers from other anarchist publications mm -hmm. And like giving free zines, and then it, it was all about like educating people about um, all of these different lines of thinking that is not often talked about in this political landscape. You know, in the in this political landscape, meaning in the United States, and then also in the South Florida microcosm. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting. That's really interesting. I I'm really curious to like hear about your experience having these type of conversations and constantly, you know, like being in this environment. For sure. Thank you for the kind words. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a really cool time, that zine fair. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it is, I guess for, we'll start with Miami. Um, it's a unique challenge uh, here in the city uh, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> uh, as I'm sure we don't, uh, you know, need to spell out for everyone. Uh, I come from a, a Cuban family and a pretty right wing um, Cuban family, I should say. And I guess I kind of like grew up 
hearing the same mierda that we all hear um, about a anything being, uh, you know, fighting for human rights. Oh, that's communism. Oh, you're not racist? That's communism. Don't you know that? Um, all that garbage. And I was always, uh, I was always trying to, like you said, you, you, you mentioned like alternatives, right? I've always tried in my life to create the alternative, to be the alternative, because what we have now is not, it's not working. What we have now is actively damaging people. Uh, the way we live, the way we work, the way we uh, distribute and um, receive the, the things we need to live. So it's always been um, a mission of mine, I guess, that we need to find another way. We need to find another way. So like going into politics was my naive dream <laughs> when I was uh, – in high school, and uh, so I studied political science, um, and now I'm an anarchist, so all you poli-sci <laughs> <laughs> uh, majors the out there, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, y good luck. <laughs> same, honestly. I studied economics, and oh. here I am. Nice. Same boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we meet a lot of, <laughs> a lot of other um, stragglers. <laughs> you think you're going to find something in that field? There's nothing. There's nothing if you have morals and, and standards. But anyways, I feel like we're getting off topic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to be an anti-capitalist and an anti-authoritarian, not only in America, but in Miami. Um, it's very difficult to create the structures that you want to see the world um, already have, to create the world that you want to live in, right? Even if it's just a little slice of that, right? Like a cooperative workspace or uh, a housing co-op, like how Smash is working on. And CLTs and all that. Like, it's not easy, but there's beauty in the struggle, and there's definitely um, the payoff is 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 going to be a beautiful s third space, like you mentioned. Um, that's going to facilitate a lot of, I guess, blossoming of relationships and networks that are going to help really change the city and the state. And God knows we we need it. Absolutely, yeah. I'm really excited to frequent the third space. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did I'm I'm curious, like how you went from you know, how did how the project begin, um, and what it took? Because I know that there's a couple of you working, working and running it. Um, and so, like, how did it begin, and then how has it, like ev it evolved? Also, why is it called Cien Fuegos? Yeah, just that okay. too. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of people think um, maybe we have family from Cien Fuegos, uh, but no. The name comes from um, Camilo Cienfuegos, who was a commander in the Cuban army post-revolution. He was part of uh, Castro's um, uh, revolutionary uh, group and mysteriously disappeared when he had some criticisms and didn't like what, you know, how things were going uh, right after the revolution, mysteriously died in a plane crash. Um, sketchy. And... Uh <laughs> And um, his <laughs> I, but another another part of his legacy um, is that you know his parents were actually Spanish anarchists from Spain who migrated over to Cuba, and um, so it's kind of a continuation of a socialist legacy, but from an anti-authoritarian um, perspective. So that's why we went with um, Camilo's Cienfuegos. Um, we went with Camilo's name. Uh, he's a hero for for most of us. Um, and what was the other question? I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, like how oh, you I began. Yeah. yeah. How so, uh, as a founder, I kind of was the one to throw around the idea. Um, I had heard about a really special place in Baltimore called Red Emma's. Shout out to Red Emma's. Mm -hmm. Red Emma's is a worker-owned radical bookstore, cafe, and event space, very similar to what we're trying to do. Um, they're named after Emma Goldman, um, the late uh, anarchist hero, um, writer, activist, just an incredible woman, uh, fighter, and another hero of ours. <laughs> um, anyways, so I, I remember being in high school, um, you know, like I said, I was a poli-sci major. I'm looking into all these weird ideologies and 
some of it was homework, some of it was just my nerdiness <laughs> to just, you know, follow, uh, read into stuff that I have a passion for. I feel that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> let me tell you right now, you don't get paid for that, <laughs> 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 which is why we're starting a yeah. co-op. So, um, I remember, you know, just reading into anarchism, reading into socialism and all the different uh, forms and just finding out all these, um, learning about the historical experiences of people like building a new world within mm -hmm. the shell of the old. And uh, I heard about Red Emma's in Baltimore and I was just so inspired. Um, you know, there was actually, that led me down a whole rabbit hole of uh, finding other worker owned uh, radical bookstores all across the US and the world. It's a long tradition. We anarchists uh, are nerds. Um, we don't like working under a boss. <laughs> so become your own boss, right? Or just get your comrades, your friends together and do things democratically, horizontally, um, and share in the profits that y'all, you know, generate. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of how it started. I, we found out a really good example and <laughs> we found a really good example and um, just kind of went with it and yeah. said, we're going to do this, but we're going to do this here in Miami. Yeah. That idea is really, like really well received. Um, there's a, a bookstore called Parody Books and Bread. Have you yeah. been there? Yes. yes. Good and friends of ours. Yes. Yeah. Good friends. And it is just a group of friends who mm -hmm. just, their business decisions are whatever, b whatever feels good for them. Right. So um, it's so beautiful. Also, have you heard of Space Baby? <laughs> also, yes. yes the yes, rapper? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so there are a couple of organizations and like panas that are kind of doing very similar work. It's really interesting, um, but we definitely need more more hubs like that, yeah, and more meeting grounds so that you know that's where the ideas really, that's where collaboration happens, and you never know. Absolutely, and if I could just add to that real quick, um, like I really like that you brought up s uh, third spaces, the importance of that. Um, the important the importance of um, non commodified space like yeah we're a book we're gonna be a bookstore right y'all can come in and hang out and have a, a good conversation with us you know and others who are on um, the same wavelength you know who are thinking critically about all this stuff um, it's 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 just super important it's something completely lacking in late stage capitalism and uh, you know it, we're gonna be really proud to uh, provide one. That in of itself is revolutionary. Absolutely. Having a space to just like congregate and talk about ideas or just have a good time, you yeah. know, just like decompress in outside of the rat race, mm -hmm. have time, like quality time that you're spending with, with, totally. friend, with friends, with people, whoever, just connecting. Yeah. Like just that importance I feel like is, is something that is, you know, just instrumental that is just fundamentally lacking in this society. And as much as you try to, to make a space for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I mean, y'all mentioned like Paradis and stuff. We, we want something very similar. We want to do something very similar. Um, I'd say there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if they're organized as a, a worker-owned co-op or not, um, but it seems to be how they're running things. seems to be really well, uh, well run and we have nothing but love for them. Um, but like every major city in the United States has not just one, but like multiple radical bookstores, rad radical gathering spaces. Like they're actually part of like movement infrastructure. Mm -hmm. This is where people congregate, meet, new relationships spring up, um, great ideas blossom, people organize there, people just have fun like you mentioned. Um, oh my God, and you guys would be like the first here, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we would. Like we don't have that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, first worker owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worker owned one. Um, Paradis is uh, a radical bookstore, and you know, in itself. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. And then I'm we just also not have. Not sure if they're worker owned. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's a good word, like movement infrastructure, because mm -hmm. like for a movement to really be successful, there's so many moving parts, and what we've realized too is that like it's not just us. Like the the movement is is really, it's gonna require so many organizations mm -hmm. and so many people and spaces, spaces in order to, yeah. Because so many people, because of the housing, it's all connected, mm -hmm. right? So like, because of the housing situation that we're in, a lot of people don't really feel safe 
um, in their homes, not or comfortable in their homes. You know, they're like sharing room with roommates or um, living with family. Um, we personally dealt with a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and that that you're talking about about collaboration is is really key. Like you put so much emphasis because we recognize very early on that this is not something that we can achieve on our own. That we're going to for us to fulfill our mission, it's going to take, you know, involving other organizations into the mission and then also giving back to those organizations as well. Like that's really yeah. the path forward. Absolutely, and that's why I really appreciate what y'all do. You guys are creating an organic community here. Um. It's almost like the connective tissue <laughs> of a lot yes. of cool um, and bright minds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sinister. <laughs> um, no, it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, it's also really cool to see how much it's blossomed. I got to say, good shit, y'all. Thank you. Good shit. I remember being under the freaking, under, you know, in the underline. And this was like a very, this was like, a, you, you, this was, it was nowhere where it is now. It was just an idea. Yeah. 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 So I wasn't even tabling for that. I was just like, right. oh, hey, I have this thing mm -hmm. that I think you'd be interested in. Yeah. So it's, it's, let me tell you, it's really great to see how far y'all have come. It's really amazing. I'm really happy for y'all. Thank you. Honestly, shout out to everyone who's helped us along the way. But oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of passion and a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. And yeah. and we wish you, you know, like that yeah. amount of growth as well. And you guys have been doing so well too. Like, I love seeing you at at the functions because mm -hmm. then I get a little tasty treat. <laughs> um, <and then> also, <laughs> also friends and like just like seeing you guys put your put your you know your agenda out there. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And when we have our space, y'all are more than welcome to host events there. You already know mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna have some cool parties. Let's do it. An anarchist mixer, anarchist speed dating. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. It's a, little, it's a little hot in here. Do you want to? <laughs> 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 um, do you want to say the last question? Yeah. Do you oh. Or yeah. So what? Oh, this is actually a really good question. Yeah, I want it. Okay. Yeah, I want Very it. last question. What do you say to people that think that what you're doing is too radical? <laughs> like, That's don't spread those ideas. Why are you talking about communism? Communism yeah. is evil. Yeah, um, let me tell you right now, I'm born and raised in Miami. I've been hearing it all my life. You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. It's not radical. You know, it's not radical to care for other human beings. It's not radical to want to get to want to dismantle a system that is based on oppression and ex exploitation. Um, don't let anyone tell you that. Um, you know, find like-minded people. Trust me, we're out there. There's a lot of us here. Uh, there's a lot of us just in this room. And find those folks who also are on that wavelength, who will back you up, uh, because people, there's a lot of people, especially in this city, um, I don't want to curse too much. <laughs> there's a lot of people with their head up their ass. There's a lot of people asleep. There's a lot of people who um, only care about them, themselves. Uh, you th you want to listen to those people, the people who would throw you under the bus the first second they can for an extra dollar or something? Uh, no, find real comrades out there. Find um, real people. Find build real relationships uh, of resistance because that's the only way we're gonna get out of this mess. Um, not just the ca you know, not just the housing crisis here, which is a big one, of course. And again, shout shouts out to uh, to Smash, um, doing the really good work. Um, not just the housing situation, it's the jobs, you know, unions are blowing up all over uh, America right now. Um, it, it's everything, everything is connected. So whatever, whatever people have to say and they, whatever people, whatever people want to say to diminish your fire, your, your fuego, uh, don't let them, don't let them, you know, another reason why we went with this name, by the way, is because we want to spark fires in the hearts. Of <laughs> <laughs> we want to spark Thanks fire. For clarifying. Of course, of course. <laughs> we want to spark fires in the heart of every person that comes into our shop, right? And has a conversation with us, and interacts with us, and organizes with us. So, you have a fire in you. Don't let any of these fuquieras, uh, you know, extinguish it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well. <sighs> 
thank you so much for that conversation, David. Yeah. Um, but don't go anywhere because now we are actually going to invite back Adrian Ooh. Yeah. for a very quick, because I think we are running probably so late, <laughs> okay? Uh, for um, a very quick segment that we are calling Where Are We Linking? So a lot of this episode today has been talking about um, location, has been talking about spaces mm -hmm. and, and just like areas where we congregate. Right, so this this segment, I actually wanted to talk about the third spaces that do exist in South Florida, or like you know, s third space adjacent, right? You know, as as, as best we can manage, <laughs> and then just the experiences that you guys have had at them. Well, uh, I think that for me, my third space. <laughs> this is gonna sound so crazy. <laughs> because I just spent all this time talking about how we need to be radical and anti-capitalist and communist and anarchist and tear down the system, but actually my third space is church. Mm. Yeah, I, I've been going to church every Sunday since, uh, since I was born, and uh, I've had my um, challenges, because um, when I, uh, my parents found out I was gay, they like, had me go through conversion therapy and all that stuff, you know, and we get along now, and I reconciled, um, but uh, that is my third space. Um, but I think that it's safe to say that at our co-op, because we do meetings there, we do workshops there, we play games there, we're going to be having the party on the 11th and stuff like that, yeah, which y'all should totally come to. <laughs> uh, that has become the third space for a lot of the people in our community, and we're very happy to provide that. And w it's obviously open to all of you as well. Awesome. You want to go? No, I can go? Okay. Uh, well, the first third space that comes to mind is, is parody because that's where I was at like most recently. Um, and it was, and you know, when I found out about it, Gladie actually introduced me when, back when she was living in North Miami um, and she's gonna be living in North Miami <laughs> again um, very soon. So uh, I, f I saw it and the first thing that I noticed was when I, when I walked into the bookstore, I saw this book that um, somebody that that graduated from my high school published. So her name is Lauren Lawrence, um, and she was really active in, in the community here for a while before like going to, I think, London to study. I don't know if she's still there, but she published this book called Women I Know. And uh, it was all about, you know, like the women that she knew in her life, um, the impact that they had had on her. And I was just like, wow, this is so cool, this place that's carrying, like, you know, somebody I, that I know that published this book, I see it right there. And then uh, just, like, being in the space, you know, seeing all of the titles there, I, I saw, like, titles that, that were talking about, um, like, kind of, like, through a lens of, like, um, you know, a socialist talking about, like, what happened in Venezuela and, like, what went wrong, and I'm like, that's, that's not something that you see very often. Um, so it was just like being in that space that is so warm, by the way, so welcoming, and then just like absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is also like really important for me. Like I'm just like sitting there like, oh, just, just, it just, you, you, you go like just feeling re rejuvenated. So yeah, like that was, that was us last night. Just like me, Gladi, Z of the, of the Sunrise Movement and of, um, and of Engage Miami. Um, and our friend B, that, that and we were just like talking about our organizations, the the things that we are that we have in motion. So that that those are really beautiful experiences and memories that I cherish. You know, there's a real lack of third spaces as we talked about. Um, so and this really became apparent to me during the pandemic. Sometimes your third space just has to be where you, wherever you can etch out, carve out a little space for you and your crew, for you and your people, um, even if it's only temporary. So even if that's just a public park for a few hours, have a little barbecue, a little kick, uh, kickback, you know? Um, even if it's just uh, having people over and having a little secret cafe in your um, living room, you know? Um, but I do want to shout out another place uh, that has uh, shown a lot of um, shown a lot of uh, opportunities for growth and and flourishing of community, which is um, house shows. I've had a lot of great uh, experiences there. 
I met a lot of really interesting and um, a lot of different types of people there. Uh, and I've, I've actually been able to like I, I've actually walked out of that door with a bunch of new friends and I don't I don't I, I, I don't see that that doesn't happen to me often <laughs> in a lot of other places I'll, I'll go into a bar and like I walk out with like less friends <laughs> 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 you know <laughs> like <laughs> so when you feel that and you experience that it's it's really cool and so shouts out to house show and um we need more spaces more third places yes and you just to clarify you're talking about goon green's house show of course of the course. notorious yes, yes. <laughs> the one and only <laughs> hell yeah which i've been to as well and which are amazing and we cannot thank you enough for making your house available yes. for us to just have a rager all night yeah 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 it's it's not easy right it's a lot of cleanup you gotta yeah. you know respect seriously yeah. yeah thanks for providing that mm. um i guess i'll wrap it up with uh, I think Kava bars mm. are some really good third spaces, um, except for maybe one that requires you to buy one drink an hour. So not that one. You know who you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but aside from that, like I guess m one of my favorite is Camp Kava. They're really good over in Davie. Um, really chill. They don't really ask you. They just let you sit there for hours and hours. I probably spent like seven hours there, like in one sitting. Um, Elixir in Hollywood. Um, yeah. So thank you to the Kava bars that exist. The mm -hmm. one we just found out about today. Um, we yeah, Euphoric I Roots. Oh, Euphoric Roots. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For for the Broward crew. Yeah. Yeah. That one was really cute. And they're all like pretty much locally yeah. owned, except for Kawasuka, yeah. which oh, we roots? shouldn't go to. Oh, roots here. Like oh, literally yeah. Liter right here. <laughs> Miami Kava, right here. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, they're great. Yeah. No, they've been great. They've yeah. been um the setting to so many of our work sessions because. Um, yeah. As some of you might know, because we talk about it very often, Gladi and I live 40 minutes away from each other, yeah. and we see each other like every day. Almost, yeah. <laughs> You're like, how does this work happen? We're like, oh, this is <laughs> <laughs> so much gas. Yeah. So much tolls. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it happens. Yeah, and so we we can't be out here spending, you know, a co like so much on coffee every single time. So, yeah, definitely the coffee bars have really helped. And, yeah. Have y'all ever thought about like what the third space is for most Miamians? Like, what do you think it would be? What is our like our collective like gathering space? Our cars. Oh well, yeah. Our cars for sure. I was thinking like I ninety five. Yeah. Or something. Or the Palmetto club space. I feel like the <laughs> club space. <laughs> <laughs> Not my third space, space, but <laughs> too long. I gotta go back. No, you third don't. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you don't no, think no, so? no, no. We thought about uh -huh. like the show. Have yeah, you ever? Yeah. Have you guys ever seen the show Broad City? No. no? Okay, anyways, so, like, it's, like, basically about these two girls, like, having, like, fun in New York or whatever, and we were, like, we, there needs to be a show that is a version of that in Miami, mm -hmm. and they always have these subway scenes, and we were, like, the Miami equivalent would just be driving on the highway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. and traffic. Yeah, because yeah, nobody takes the metro. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, yeah. no th I mean, Stuck where the is palmetto. the metro? Come on now. There's, yeah. there's no metro. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> two lines. Yeah. That's it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. We got a banner for that. Transit Miami. Alliance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Transit Miami. Alliance Miami. Shout out. Yeah. yeah. Good well, work. Well, um, thanks again for having this wonderful conversation. We specifically, you know, designed this episode to have both of you here yeah. together so we yeah. could the co have this. Bros. Yes. The co-op bros. <laughs> 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 the co-op bros. The communist bros. <laughs> <laughs> Y con eso, <laughs> we conclude the <coughs> final episode of Panavision for this season. Join us next season to learn more about creatives and entrepreneurs and organizations that are working to change their communities. And if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to hear the other ones, you can check out all our stuff on YouTube and Spotify. Go on there, click like, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye. bye. Love you. See you. Sign up for our newsletter. <laughs> <laughs>